digitize your hand drawing or painting and turn it into a fully editable vector illustrator file. Let's go over step one. First you have to create your drawing. You can um, grab a drawing that you've already done or start with a blank piece of paper and be creative. A high contrast black and white drawing works the best so I suggest drawing with a black marker um, or you can trace over a pencil drawing with a marker but it is possible to digitize paintings, colored pencil drawings, and pencil sketches and I will show you those options a little bit later. Next you're going to take a photo or scan the piece of artwork that you created. Whichever option is easiest for you um, either one will work. You can take a picture of it with your phone, take a picture of it with your camera, or use a scanner if you have access to that. Then you just need to email, like if you took the picture uh, with your phone, you would just email yourself that photo so that you can get it onto your computer and save it to your hard drive for accessing in the next step. You don't have to be a fancy photographer, no special lighting is required, just use the highest resolution setting available on whichever device you're using. Alright, let's get to step three. For step three, we need to place our new photo image into Illustrator. So we want to go to File and New because we want to create a new document, which will bring up the screen and then we're going to hit this button that says create new. Now for most things um, I just use an 11 by 8.5 landscape document but if you have a specific size that you want um, your artwork to be go ahead and plug that in here. You can do inches, you can do points, picas, millimeters, centimeters, or pixels. Um, we don't need any bleed on our document and depending on what you want to use it for later you can either do CMYK for a printed piece or RGB if you plan on using it only on your screen. So go ahead and pick whichever settings. You can always change these settings later so it's not life or death if you get the right one. Once you get this set you can hit create. That brings us up to our blank artboard that we can start creating. First we need to place our image on the document, the image that contains our artwork. So to do that we go up to File, Place, and you're going to find your photo of your artwork. So there's mine and I'm going to place it. And you'll see when I hit Place you can see a little thumbnail there of my image and what I'm gonna do is click up here in the corner I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag so my image is nice and big and fills up the artboard then uh, I'm going to rotate it and if you hold the shift key down it keeps it nice and straight for you and then I'm gonna enlarge it. <clears throat> Doesn't matter that that carpet is showing in the background. We're gonna get rid of that really easily later. So let's just get our image front and center um, so we can start to play around with it. Now, depending on one, what kind of artwork you are using will depend on your settings. So no matter what, we are going to be using the image trace tool. And if you click on your um, photo that you just placed, there's a couple ways to do this. There is a shortcut button up here on the top of your um, document right underneath your menu that says image trace. If you are converting a black and white marker image similar to mine, meaning there's no color, um, it's just black marker on a white piece of paper, all you have to do is click image trace and Illustrator starts working its magic, it's doing all of its little things automatically kind of behind the scenes and voila there is a preview of what our converted artwork looks like. Now right here where it says expand if you are happy with this result which I am I think it traced it very well we can always go in and fine-tune it but um, for me, this is exactly what I wanted, just a nice crisp black and white 
um, trace of my artwork. So this is good. And I'm going to hit expand. And now when you hit expand, it has added all the curves and lines and it is truly a vector image now. You can see the points, they're all editable. So now we start fine tuning. The hard part is over. Like Illustrator did all the hard work. Um, you now have edited, editable vector points and lines that you can change. So let's get rid of this background junk. I'm going to just click off of my art so that it deselects. And if you if you notice, everything's grouped together. I can click on any point and it's grabbing all of the different shapes and pieces of the artwork. So to start manipulating it, um, we need to ungroup it. So if you have it all selected with your selection tool, you are going to go up to object and you're going to go down to ungroup. And then when you click off of it and back onto it, now you can select each individual piece. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select, drag, and select everything that I want to get rid of. So I, am, I have these little spots selected and it's selecting the white fill that's in the background. So I'm going to delete and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Perfect. Um, and you can see too, if I click in the middle here, there it automatically places a white fill inside the outline, which I love because then we can go in and change that fill. Um, instead of white, we can change it to color or we can add a pattern. You can do whatever you want. Um, so we're going to leave that white fill there for now. Um, to me, it still looks like it's maybe a little crooked, so that's easy to fix. I'm going to click and drag, so I select the whole piece. Oh, I see some junk I forgot down here. Let's drag over that and hit delete. Okay, so I'm going to select my whole piece, and if I do a Control R or Apple R, it brings my ruler up here. So I can click on the ruler and drag down, and I it will give me a guideline. So I'm going to put that here, right at the bottom of my art. So when I select my art, I can rotate it. So I use my selection arrow tool. I have everything selected. Now if I hover up here in the corner, it gives me the little arrows, the double-sided arrows. And I can click, and I can rotate my art and kind of straighten it out. And I'm, I'm just kind of visually using this guide um, to straighten it. And I think if I click off of it, that is pretty darn straight. So um, now that I am done using my guide, it it might be just a pet peeve of mine, but I want to get rid of it because I don't like, it just bugs me. So I'm going to do a control colon. Control colon will hide that guideline. And the same thing if you want to see it again, control colon brings it back. Control. There. Or I say control because I'm on a PC, but you can also use your Apple key, Apple colon. Okay, so we have our vectorized artwork, and if I wanted to, which I'm just going to show you how to do it, I see that there's a, little, a few little imperfections here. So I'm going to use my zoom tool, which is the magnifying glass, and click and drag in real close here. And I want to get rid of this because it kind of, it just, it didn't trace perfectly, but this is easily fixable. So I'm going to use my arrow, delete, I'm going to delete this, and that one, perfect. zoom back out so I can see and okay so now you have a completely editable drawing you can like I said you can select these inside pieces you can go to your color palette I'm going to use RGB and you can start filling those oh, I want those all the same color so you can fill those with whatever you want um, this is where your creativity comes out so you can edit it, you can select all of it and enlarge it. Um, 
the nice thing about it being vector now is that it doesn't matter how big or how small it is because no matter how you scale it, you could make this the size of a billboard and it will print crystal clear because it's vector and it's not raster. It's not pixels, it's points and formulas. Um, a good way to check if something's vector or raster is to do a command or a control Y and then you can see the, the wire frame. So you can see right here that it's vector and those are all your pads. Now what I want to show you also, if you have a painting um, or something multicolor, there are different adjustments that you need to do. It's still very simple, but let's go over that. I am going to place a new raster image. I just I'm going to use this painting image so it's the same process. Place, click and drag so it fills up your artboard. <clears throat> but as you can see, this is a totally different piece of art. And maybe this is more similar to what you're trying to vectorize. Um, it's colorful. It's not black and white. And there's a lot more detail. And we can tell that it's raster because when we do um, a command Y, there's nothing there. That just means that there's no paths, it's not vector, it's raster. So now let's bring up, if we tried to use the, the shortcut like we did on the first, um, the first image that was black and white, it's not going to work. It's, I'll show you, just hit image trace. Yeah, see, and that's not what we want. <laughs> so we're going to control, I'm going to control Z to get rid of that. And I'm going to show you the um, image trace palette options. If you go to window and you go down to image trace, it brings up your details over here. So we have to select our image that we want to vectorize. I'm going to get rid of this menu. And now we have a whole bunch of different options. Um, these are preset options, so you can go ahead and play around with these to see which one gives you the best output. I'm going to guess that I'm going to use the 16 color um, shortcut. So I'm just going to set it for that first and see what happens here. It's working. Take a sip of coffee. Ooh, look at that. That's actually not too bad. Um, a lot of detail showed up. So um, I'm going to expand this view there. And see, now you can see, look at how all of these, it created all of these points. Um, it didn't quite pick up all the colors. There was quite a big color shift, so we can, we can still change that. Um, I mean, this isn't bad, but we can do better. So let's do better. We're going to control Z. Let it go back to our image. There. Yep, yeah, it is. I mean, the original image is quite a bit brighter, but I think we can narrow that down. So um, we're not going to use a default we're just going to, a, a preset, we're just going to leave that at default. And um, our tracing result, you can leave that there. Um, yeah, leave that at tracing result because that's, you kind of, you want to see a preview of it before it actually um, expands it. And under mode, here's where you can change. Um, the default is black and white, but we want to change that because we have a color image. So go ahead and do color. Here's where you can change your color palette. Right now it's set to limited, um, which is probably why we saw that severe color shift. It just wasn't as bright and it didn't pick up as many colors because it's set on a limited palette. But we can um, change that. So let's do full tone. And we're gonna tell it as many colors as it can pick up. That's what we wanna do, like all the way up. And then if we hit the advanced arrow, we can even um, narrow that down even more. Do we want a high number of paths? Yes, probably because this is super detailed. And the more paths that we have means the more detail it's going to pick up. So let's put that all the way up to 100. 
um, <clears throat> corners is not such a big deal. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it set where it's at for now. We can always come back and adjust it if we need to. So let's leave that at 75. Again, just it's another tool to adjust higher or lower depending on how happy you are with your results. So um, noise, let's put that in the middle. There is, oh, this is a good time to just say again that there is also a PDF included with this training that was sent to you that covers in written form so you can refer back to it all the settings in this palette. So it's all written out really nicely and m might be easier to understand than listening to me. So um, we're going to leave the noise in the middle. Um, method, overlapping, or a butting. I'm going to leave it at this first one because I've never done it differently than that. So let's leave it at the first one. Um, snap curves to lines. Let's leave that checked. Um, replace slightly curved lines with straight. Yep, let's leave that. Um, do we want to ignore white? No, nope, we want, if something's white, we want it to fill it with white. So let's um, keep that. And then paths, anchors, colors, don't need to do anything there. Let's hit the preview button so we can see what it looks like. Ooh, that turned out really good. I can barely see a difference between the preview and the original. So, I really like that. Um, awesome. Let's go ahead and expand. Um, up on the top here, your expand button. Um, and see what our final product looks like. So that's it's blue because it's showing us all the paths but if you are on your arrow tool and you hit um, the the back of your page here so you deselect it that is amazingly clear if I zoom in and I do a control Y to see the outline oh, it's doing a quick save for me <clears throat> And it's a really big file, so it's a little bit slow. Um, I think it will still show me outlines. Yep. Oh, wow. See? And these are all completely editable. You can click on any of those little points, even though it would be extremely hard at this point to change much, if anything. What you do have... Let's get out and go back, do a control Y so we can see the whole painting. Okay. So what we have now though is a fully scalable, meaning we can enlarge this puppy to the size of a billboard and it will still print clearly image. Um, if I would have used that raster image as um, and tried to put it on a billboard, billboard, it would be pixely, it would be blurry, it wouldn't be high enough resolution. But this is why Illustrator is my saving grace. Once you get something vectorized, just like I showed you how to do, you can scale it to however big or however small you want. Resolution is no longer a factor. So you could now take this painting and you could take the artwork and have it printed on a t-shirt. You could have it printed on a billboard. You could make custom mugs. Um, the possibilities are truly, truly endless. This would make a great greeting card cover. So I'm always trying to help people find ways to, you know, earn some extra money or put their skills to good use and actually make pro a profit off of them because this stuff, these skills are in high, high demand. And I just showed you how to do it. And if um, you can admit that it wasn't maybe as complicated as you thought, um, I hope it wasn't anyway, 
but that is going to conclude this training for you. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, please, please, please contact me, leave a comment, email, any way possible. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have questions. Um, make sure that you grab that PDF so you have um, all these, um, the explanation for all these different options on here. So it will greatly help you in the future. And until next time, thank you and have a great day.